what is up YouTube and welcome back to the channel today we are taking the red and blue lights off of the Honda this is going to be part two of the Honda build series so far we have posted a community post to vote on what color we're going to paint the bike and we have gotten license and title and registration and all that type of stuff taken care of um, but we have not started building or replacing any items yet uh, and I am starting to ride this bike on a more regular basis so we wanted to get rid of these uh, red and blues and uh, limit that liability um, for those who don't know red and blue is not a legal color to have on your vehicle uh, especially while driving on the road and especially if they're functioning so uh, to protect myself, I am uh, taking these lights off at this time. Now there are ways to be legal with red and blues on the road, like if you're doing funeral escorts or a uh, off-duty law enforcement officer, um, but I don't fall into any of those categories, so uh, th this is our solution for that. Now these lights on the side of the back box were pretty easy to take off. They were just uh, some screws with nuts and the holes for the wires were actually big enough to fit the whole connector all the way through, just like that. And uh, so these came off pretty easy and the dirt underneath cleaned up pretty good. Um, something kind of interesting, these lights are really old. The, uh, the lights are from 2007, the bike's from 2006. So. I guess it makes sense that they would be that old, but it, uh, it's nice to see that they lasted that long. Now these back porch lights, um, the lights on that white bar that I was just messing with were a little bit more of a pain to get out. The uh, entire frame had to come off, not the frame of the bike, but that, that white square tubing frame bit had to come off to uh, get access to the nuts. So I, I needed some uh, different tools than what I was expecting. Um, but luckily our garage is uh, stocked with just about everything that we could possibly need. And just a quick reminder guys, as time goes on, we will do more of a how to do and how to do this type of stuff. Um, but with this video, it's just meant to be quick and easy. You might have seen the saddlebag on the floor over there. We did take off the saddlebags just to get easier access to all the wiring and such. But the, uh, the bags are actually meant to come off. So... It's kind of neat, they kind of act like little suitcases if you uh, have equipment you need to bring inside with you or something like that. Um, luckily I have a garage to park in so I don't necessarily need to do that on a regular basis, but it is kind of a nice feature. Uh, and now we're back to these lights. I mean, we tried for a while just to get back there with uh, with like some pliers just to, or the ratchet just to try to get on there and get the, uh, the nuts and screws out. Um, but it was not uh, working very good for us. The, the nut just kept spinning on the screw and we couldn't get enough pressure on the nuts to get them out. I think Lucas here got one off, uh, but the, the ones on the, um, on the light that he's playing with, the one on the right side and on the other light, the one on the left side, those are the ones that we were having tr troubles with. Luke made a valiant effort here trying to get at that uh, that nut, but it just wasn't working out. Also, while we're sitting here, that little uh, chair sitting on top of that table in the corner right there, um, I couldn't find my ladder, so I uh, made a leaning tower of sketchiness to put one of our garage cameras up. I was standing on top of that for a while getting down was kind of scary but uh we made it so it's all good i just need to put that away now so to take this bracket off we needed to get these bolts out and then there's also some bolts hanging out right underneath the um lights themselves those uh, had like a really long nut attached to them at the bottom and we needed uh, deep well sockets to, to break those nuts So 
So we didn't have any instructions or anything like that helping us with this. So we were kind of figuring it out as we went. Um, so that little discussion we were having about, you know, what was connected to what was us just trying to determine what steps we needed to take to remove this bracket so we could get these lights off. So those pliers probably weren't the right tool for that. So I went and grabbed the open-ended wrench that we needed to actually loosen those. And this is roughly when we discovered that they had the nuts attached to the bottom. It's kind of hard to see, but in this shot, you can actually see when I move the, the bolt, that nut spins at the bottom. And uh, I just hadn't put two and two together yet. I wasn't sure why this wasn't loosening up, but uh, we did figure it out eventually, I promise. I told you we'd figure it out. Uh, so this one had to come off as well as the one to the right side of the screen. Um, once we had both of those off, I noticed how badly this crash bar was actually bent. You'll be able to tell here in a minute. So as that gets looser, watch how far this bar just wants to droop. And it's not the weight of the bar. It's really not that heavy. It's the, the metal is actually bent. I spent a solid five minutes looking for these wire cutters, uh, but I skipped over that for the sake of the ADHD in the chat. And so right here I am cutting off this connector. The connector did not fit through the bracket, um, and you can tell too we got the bracket off in this shot as well. Um, but the, the connector didn't fit through the bracket and I needed the light to come off. So we did snip those connectors, um, but don't be worried about that. It's super easy to fix. Um, and honestly, we're not gonna be reusing these lights anyways, because again, they're red and blue and they're just not a legal uh, form of warning uh, that we can use at this time. So these lights will be sitting on my shelf until someone wants them and uh, I'm not gonna be using them for work. So when they do finally get reused, I'll, I'll put those connectors back on. So now we start reassembling the bracket because I do want to reuse the actual bracket, just not those lights. And you can see how bent these bars are. They don't, they don't even want to be where they're supposed to be. I ended up needing Lucas to lift them pretty significantly uh, to even get them to attach. pocket tools.
So just a reminder, this used to be a Phoenix PD training bike for officers who are new to the Moto Force. Um, so these bars are probably bent just because of how many times this bike has been down. Uh, but it's no fault of the uh, riders or anything like that. It's just part of the learning process. Um, and luckily for me, uh, it's really not that big of a deal. I'm not going to be doing a whole lot with taking them on and putting them off. So um, the bars being bent is pretty inconsequential. Uh, the left side saddlebag does not want to open all the time though because of how badly they're bent. So I may have to do some correcting eventually, but for right now it's not a big deal. That's going to be pretty much it for this video today, guys. If you're still watching, I appreciate you, but uh, I know this is get already getting to be kind of a long video. So if, if you liked it, leave a like and subscribe. If you don't, that's fine too. Dislike it, but leave me a comment. Tell me why you didn't like it and what I can do better. Remember, this content's for you, and I want you to enjoy it. So if you're not enjoying it, please tell me why, and I will do my best to fix that so that you have a better time watching our content. And if you want to see more of this bike and the build process, there is a playlist on the channel homepage. Um, it is not very populated yet, uh, unless you're watching this very far in the future. Uh, but as we have time, we will work on the bike and continue restoring it and making it something kind of cool. So I would appreciate it if you guys would interact with the community posts and let me know what you guys want to see done with the bike as we go. I will be uh, posting more, you know, votes and stuff like that. So if you have any interest in that, feel free to uh, stay tuned and answer those questions and leave a comment, whatever it is that you want to do to communicate with me. I'm pretty active on the site. So thank you guys and have a great day. And if you're still here, feel free to enjoy this time lapse of us figuring out how to clean the shop so it's a little bit more easy to navigate. We do tend to uh, share this shop between quite a few people who uh, do maintenance on their vehicles. Um, so tools get kind of put everywhere and it takes a little bit of time to find everything and put it back where it's supposed to be. Um, I'm looking at ways of correcting that in the future. Uh, so if you guys have any ideas, feel free to drop them in those comments because I, I need help keeping this place organized with how many people use all the tools. Last but not least, big thanks to Stockton and Lucas for helping me out with the bike and cleaning the shop. Uh, they both were just kind of around the office when I was working on it, so they, they volunteered to help and I really appreciate it. So thanks guys for helping and uh, again, if you guys are still here watching, uh, feel free to give them some shout outs in the comments. Uh, there, there Stockton was playing with the uh, scene lighting, we uh, pretended like it was a blaster from Star Wars, pretty funny. Um, but uh, yep, and uh, that's it guys. So like I said, have a good day. Be safe Leave a like subscribe if you don't like it. That's fine. Dislike and leave a comment Let me know why so I can fix it But uh, yeah, have a good one and we'll see you next time